Hi everyone, and welcome to my channel about historical and less historical costumes. In this video, I'll show you how I made this Anne Boleyn costume from Six the Musical. I think that no matter what your thoughts on this musical and the overall style of costumes may be, it's honestly not my style either, but I think that these costumes are objectively works of art in their own right. From the creative use of materials, to the choice of colors, to the probably my favorite when done well, mixing of modern and historical influences, which is evident in the bodices and sleeves, peplums and skirts. Six is a modern musical about Henry VIII's six wives, Catherine of Aragon, Anne Boleyn, Jane Seymour, Anna of Cleves, Catherine Howard, and Catherine Parr. The basis of the musical is historically inspired, but everything else is very much modernized. From the casting, to costumes and set design, to the language, lyrics, and even the more contemporary way in which the Queen's struggles are presented. It's its own thing, creative and quite clever. It never tries to present itself as historically accurate, but made for modern audiences. Everything about this musical screams modern perspective, and because it's so consistently woven into the fabric of the musical in all areas, I think it works. All the costumes are really interesting too. They always gave me a sort of cosmic vibe, as if all the six queens are just colorful constellations somewhere in another universe. But what's even cooler is the fact that each of the costumes has some interesting and clever features. Catherine of Aragon wears gold that symbolizes her power and regalness since she was the first and a queen for 24 years. The double peplum might also be indicative of her status. Anne Boleyn wears green in reference to green sleeves, even though it's debatable whether that song was written for her. She also has her iconic but modernized bee necklace, and actually both the beheaded wives, Boleyn and Howard, wear necklaces. Jane Seymour wears white, which evokes a wedding dress vibe, as she is considered to be Henry's only true love. Anna of Cleves is in red for passion, power, and strength, and she has shorts just like Catherine Parr has trousers, since both wives outlived Henry. Catherine Howard is in pink, which symbolizes her youth, and her skirt is transparent, representing how she was seen as an object of desire rather than for her personality. Lastly, Catherine Parr is in blue, which is indicative of her intelligence and wisdom, and she wears trousers instead of a skirt, as mentioned previously, since she outlived Henry VIII. While they all have these cyberpunk-looking, heavily studded leather outfits, elements of each queen's outfit are also historically inspired. From the skirts and peplums, to Parr, Cleves, and Boleyn's sleeves, to Aragon, Howard, and Seymour's bodices, and many other little elements. So, I decided to make one of these costumes myself, for myself. Well, I chose Boleyn, like most people I've seen online, but there's a good reason for it. I believe that her costume can be made decently well with the fewest materials necessary. It probably has the easiest top to make, which doesn't mean easy, just easiest of all the six queens. And she has some interesting sleeves and perhaps the coolest color combination. Initially, the plan was to just make the top because of the costs, but as I had the materials in front of me, I estimated that I can indeed make a skirt too. Now, it's not her actual skirt that consists of eight panels, but that's the twist in the title of this video. My take on the skirt is pretty different, but it still turned out pretty cool and I'm sure you're gonna want to see it. The costume I made here ended up costing just about 50 euros, so realistically, if I were to buy a bit extra materials for the proper balloon skirt, I could still keep the cost down well below 100 euros, which is still a lot, admittedly, but for an outfit like this, I'd say it's a decent bargain. I got 13 meters of these studs at a local dollar store for just around 4 euros. Now, I know, they're square, pyramid shapes, too small, but they worked really well. I needed meters and meters of this, so yeah, I used probably around 10 plus, and it was crucial to get the price low for this part of the costume. I was going to get the faux black leather at a Slovenian online store, but they didn't have it in stock, which was actually a blessing in disguise, because exploring other options led me to this basically perfect faux black leather at a fair price. And the most important element, the green iridescent slash holographic plastic vinyl. I'm going to link all the materials in the description box in case you want to tackle this task yourself, but you're probably just here for the costume, so let's continue. 
I made a mock-up for the top first, tried it on, adapted it, and then cut out the bodice panels out of the black leather. I cut out the squares and I played around with the layout so that it worked best for my size of the bodice. And you can see the layout here, the distance between all the squares is not really the same, but that's so that the upper two green squares fit on better. You can see it in the picture, what I'm trying to explain. So yeah, next I made five green strips for each arm, folded them over and trimmed them with black ribbon and studs so those get attached to the shoulders. And then also the smaller black folded over pieces for the lower part of the top. I glued on the stud trim and individual studs, then sewed on each of the green squares individually. If I only used squares, I could significantly save up on the cost of the green leather slash vinyl. Needless to say, the inside of this costume looks horrible, but the exterior turned out nice, so I say it's worth it. The necklace is also made of black faux leather, two rows of rhinestones, and a black ribbon so that it's adjustable in the back. And the B is made out of an old CD. Yes, that's right, a CD. And then a bunch of rhinestones are glued on top, plus a whole lot of regular and green glitter. The skirt, as mentioned, was a sort of last-minute decision because I had just enough fabric for four panels and just enough for the green hollow leather. Literally, this, what you're seeing here, is all that was left in the end. I couldn't get the right shape of the dress because I had too little fabric, so I decided to make it my own and I got creative with the placement of the green squares. I even cut out a few smaller ones to spice it up. And yeah, I like how it turned out. Quite far from the original, but pretty cool. The green sleeves are made very simply, out of materials I already had on hand. I had footage of that, but somehow it got lost. It's just green stretchy fabric with black fishnet tights over it, and some studs as everywhere else on the costume. 